This is Snake Speaks, and in this episode, I'm going to be going over Ronda Rousey's latest autobiography called Our Fight. Going to talk a little bit about the book itself, um, what I thought about it, give my honest um, review on the book, and towards the end, going to touch on the lady herself and some of the uh, misconceptions and preconceived notions that are floating around the internet out there. So stay tuned. <clears throat> So first, let's get into the book itself. Um, I actually read her first autobiography called Your Fight, uh, My Fight, Your Fight. And while it was well written and I enjoyed it, um, Our Fight, the second one, the follow-up, which delves a little bit more into um, after her UFC career, it's actually, I enjoyed this one a lot more. Um, Maybe because I'm more of a WWE fan than UFC, but also because I felt like the way that this one spoke to the reader uh, had a lot more passion, and it was a, it was there was a powerful account of some of the things that were going on um, post UFC and like in between careers, some of the, the personal stuff that that you don't really get to see or know. Rhonda actually really opens up about her struggles um, from you know the losses that she took in UFC to. She actually miscarried a couple of times, so there was some really powerful accounts of personal and personal natures that you really get to see the person herself as she opens up in the pages. Uh, as I said, I thought it was well written um, because her sister actually had a hand in helping write it. You could tell that it was told, you know, from Ronda Rousey's point of view. It wasn't some ghostwriter like just putting down facts on a paper. You actually felt the emotion of it. So. You also get like an inside uh, look into her training process and how her mind works in relation to the the goals that she wants to achieve, uh, the laser like focus that she puts into um, achieve, achieving these goals, which also amounts to quite a bit of pressure that she puts on herself. But it is interesting to see how she will um, come up with something that she wants to attain and how she goes about attaining it. So an inspiring account of um, how mental focus can actually uh, help you to to get to to levels that you never thought you could get to before. Um, So essentially, I believe that's part of why the book is titled Our Fight. But it's also um, her work ethic that you see on the page. And in in reality is what sets her apart from uh, the haters and the trolls that are constantly berating her online. So now I'm going to get into a little bit of something that irks me, um, about society and how they like to build up people as champions in, uh, it doesn't matter sports, you know, uh, WWE, UFC, movies, music, anything. Society has this, I don't know, sickness where they want to get behind someone when they're on the rise, um, because they see themselves in that. It's the sort of the Rocky story, the underdog. They want to get behind this person and champion them until they realize their goals. Once this person gets on top, the society no longer sees themselves in that person. Instead, they see a mirror being held up to them, and they see all their faults and flaws, and they hate them for attaining that goal. So essentially, once they reach the top, they want to drag them back down to their level so they can get behind them again. Um, it, you see it all the time. It happened with Ronda. It happened with Conor McGregor. It's going to happen in, and already has started in WWE with Cody Rhodes. People got behind him for a very long time to quote unquote finish his story, which essentially meant winning the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. And now that he has, they are already turning on him. He's boring. He's this, he's that. Push someone else. Now, I don't know if that's just the ADD of the fan base where they they get bored really super easy, or it's like I said, they can only get behind someone in the chase. Now, that being said, the the majority of the vitriol aimed towards Ronda Rousey online is essentially um, they choose specific sound bites from interviews or things that she mentions in her book uh, that are, and they frame them in the most negative light because they know that those are going to get the clicks. The old adage is, if it bleeds, it leads. So the more negative they paint this storyline, the more clicks they're going to get because for some reason, 
the negative always gets more attention than anything positive. I don't know why that is. That's something that I wish would change in this world. So rather than focusing on, you know, all her accomplishments, they try to wash that away with anything negative they can come up with. Um, But the thing is, like, all the hate coming at her, it's from either three places. One, they're coming from has-beens, washed up old guys who nobody really gives a shit what they think anyway because they've they've they're you know old news and they're trying to stay relevant by using ronda rousey as the crutch two it comes from people who are never going to amount to anything so these are the trolls i was talking about before who just come you know it's for their own amusement because they're not going to history will not remember their name so they try to tear down those who are actually trying to achieve greatness and the third one that it comes from is the the misinformed. Um, these are the people who don't actually know the whole story. They they essentially they see these headlines online and they just they have preconceived notions of who she is, so they run with it. To those people, especially, I implore you to read this book, read both of them, and you'll get a better sense of who Ronda Rousey is uh, as a person, as an athlete, as a pioneer. As much as they want to talk nonsense about how you know she fell from grace or whatever you cannot deny the things that she did in multiple sports multiple arenas uh, like i said most of these people help, will never accomplish anything so they try to uh paint a negative light on her but you know history is going to remember her as a pioneer there would be no women's ufc matches without ronda rousey there would have been no wrestlemania women's main event without Ronda Rousey. Um, that is fact. And, you know, I had the great fortune of actually meeting Ronda Rousey in person, which was a huge bucket list item for, for myself. And most of the time when I get a chance to an opportunity to meet people who I uh, respect and admire, I let them know this. And she appreciated it. And she was, you know, uh, contrary to the public image of her, she was cool. She was laid back, generous of her time. She seemed like the type of person that would be really cool to hang out with and just shoot the shit about video games or Lord of the Rings, stuff like that. So the things that you see online are never actually the truth. For example, when she joined WWE, her intention was never to be the champion. She didn't want the title. She didn't even want to be a baby face. And I touched on this with her when I spoke with her. I said, you should have been a heel the whole time. She said, I know, right? Ronda wanted to come in and she wanted to pattern her career after her hero and namesake, Rowdy Roddy Piper. She wanted to be a massive heel that the other ladies uh, could, could combat and actually it would elevate each and every person in the company. It was... Vince McMahon and the creative who is the ones who wanted to put the belt on her and put her out there smiling all the time. Rhonda had much better visions. If you read the book, you'll see she wanted to have the singles match with Becky Lynch. She wanted to have a uh, fight pit match with Liv Morgan. She wanted to do a lot of things that they wouldn't allow her to do. So when she took all the heat and the blame for her last run in WWE, come to find out, not her fault. When she came back, she had aspired to give the fans exactly what they wanted, but they kept shutting her down. So as I say, everything you see online is aimed towards getting clicks and likes and views because it's all driven by money. So I implore you to pick up the book, give it a read and formulate your own opinion because she's more than just a soundbite. Um, she's, you know, like anybody else, she's got levels to her, deeper levels. And she's accomplished more in her, like she's only in her 30s and she lives the life that she wants to live. So, uh, and, and honestly, she just picked up another trade as a, now she's a screenwriter. And the way that she went about doing that, she could have just said, hey, I'm Ronda Rousey, I want to write a screenplay. But she, again, the way that she goes after a, a goal that she wants to accomplish. She dove right into it, reading scripts as an intern, and now she's writing her on. So I applaud that. I actually want to use that in my own writing career, um, that mentality. So 
I, for one, big fan of Ronda Rousey, always will be, regardless of all of the, you know, <laughs> all the trolls trying to pull her down. Doesn't matter. She doesn't read that stuff. Neither do I. So, uh, but again, our fight, powerful read. Uh, pick up a copy, give it a, give it a read, formulate your own opinions, and, and let me know what you think about it.